Alright, so today we're going to set up our database and do some CRUD stuff. And the library that we're going to use is called HugSQL. The version right now is going to be 0.5.1. And we're going to be using Postgres, which is good because it's the recommended database. So we also have the version for the Postgres driver. And this database driver is actually Java. So it allows us to use Clojure to talk to Java and all that good stuff. So we're going to need to update our depth.eden. And if you're currently still connected to the REPL, you're going to want to disconnect so that when you start up a REPL again, it'll download the new dependencies. So Postgres is 482.2.2, I believe. Yep, that's correct. And then hug SQL is 5.1 or 0.5.1. We're also going to need a Postgres instance, and I'm going to be using Docker to create that. And I'll define it all in a Docker Compose YAML file. And truth be told, I'm just copying and pasting this from a previous Docker YAML file. So the important note is that this is going to be Postgres, and that's why the image is set to Postgres. We're going to be exposing the same port, so 5432. And then for environment variables, we'll have the default of Postgres and Postgres as user and password. The database here, we're going to define as CLJ contacts, so nothing too crazy. If you have Postgres already on your machine, you can just set one up by creating a new database called CLJ contacts. And that should be pretty much all you need to do. Since we're using the default port, our code base should work out of the box with a locally defined database. So this should be good to go. But if you are using Docker, you're going to want to start this Postgres server using Docker Compose up. And then dash D is just saying that it's a daemon, so it'll run in the background. Now the pseudo part is really only because I'm on Linux. So this is going to ask you for my password. And now our Postgres server is up. Now, our core file is getting a little long, so I'm actually going to make a new file called db.clj. And this is where we're going to do all of our database stuff. So that's really all we need to jack in, so I'm going to start the REPL now. And as always, you can keep this web view up, but I don't really like it, so I'll get rid of it. All right, the first thing that we need to do is define a config value. So the class name is subprotocol. This is actually part of the documentation, but it's the Java JDBC connection stuff. That's saying that we're using the Postgres driver so that Java itself could connect to a Postgres server. The subname is going to be the host value, and that basically means it's the connection string. So we're going to connect to localhost slash the database name, which we defined as CLJ underscore context. And then user and password is going to map to what we defined in the database as the user and password for that Postgres connection. Now, if we go back to depths, under paths, there's this resources directory, which we're going to have to make. But inside of resources, this is where we're going to hold our, all of our SQL code. And this is actually how Hug SQL works. It reads in normal SQL and then transforms that into, and then transforms that into closure code. And Hug SQL does this through the use of comments. And inside of each of the comments, it takes in keywords or closure keywords, and the computed functions are created based on these things as instructions basically name is going to be the name of the function that we want command is going to be what we want to do with this following sql most of the time it's going to be execute because we want to execute the query the result is going to be the return value that we expect and then lastly doc this is optional but it's it's the doc string or the documentation stuff and the following command that we want to do is creating a contact table and then with those instructions in the comments we can write raw real SQL. And for our context, I wanted to have first name, last name, and email. We're going to give it a unique identifier of an ID, which here we're going to use a serial, also known as an auto incrementing integer. And then personally, I like to have a create at for all my database stuff. So that's why I added a create it at. And this is going to be a timestamp with the default value of the current timestamp that the contact is created. Now in dbclj, if you load the file, into your REPL, which is signified by this little thing here, evaluating file. I'm going to add a comment block so that we could evaluate code. But we're going to need to import hug SQL. And then we're going to call a function from hug SQL. And this is kind of shortened, but it's, it's saying it's going to define all the database functions named as def db fns. And then the argument in it is going to be the path to the SQL file. And this is going to be relative to resources. So let's load the file again and check what we have available to us. So a lot of magic is happening with this function, but this file now has access to the SQL function that we created, and it's going to be called create contacts table. 
And if you're connected to the REPL, the IntelliSense will pick up that this function is available in this file. Now each database function takes in the first argument as the database config, which is what we defined earlier. And don't worry about the underlying squigglies. The closure linter is actually disconnected from our REPL, so this will happen every once in a while. But we can evaluate this, and we get zero back, which we got zero back, so that's not very descriptive. So we're going to want to go into our database. And the name of our Docker container is CLJ Contacts DB. So that means we want to execute interactively inside of CLJ Contacts DB the command of psql, which is the Postgres client, and dash u for the Postgres user of Postgres. So now we're inside of the Postgres database. Let's connect to our database, which is CLJ Contacts DB, I believe. No. Nope. Yep, CLJ Contacts. And then if we could do describe tables, we'll see that contacts is now created. And we did this through closure. Let's also describe the table of contacts. And this is all the SQL that, and as expected, this is everything that we defined. So ID is a auto incrementing integer. We have first name, last name, and email, as well as the created at timestamp. And then down here, it's just saying that ID is our primary key. All right, let's just connect. Now that we know that our connection is working, we go back into contacts.sql and start writing more queries. Now I'm gonna be using a little bit of a shorthand. It still follows this ordering as name comes first, then the command, then the results, and a question mark is gonna be a query command. And then star means that there's a variable result. But for other commands, this will be a number. And you'll see that in a more specific example, but this is getting all contacts, which we're going to define as select star from contacts. Next is get contact by ID, and the result should be one, but just in case something weird happens, I'm going to just include everything. And then you'll notice that this is not actually real SQL. We're sending in a closure keyword, and hug SQL will take care of that with the second argument that of each function. But before we get back to closure, let's define the rest of the CRUD functions, starting with insert and with the values, we'll define each of them by closure keywords. I'm using dash snake case here just because it's more idiomatic in closure than to use underscores. And we'll be returning the ID so that we can requery the database to get the specific inserted contact. Next is update, and you'll notice that there's a bang sign here. This just means it's an execute command, and this is where we're going to return exactly one item. And then finally, we need a delete contact by ID, and that should do it for all of our CRUD commands. Now we can go back to our CLJ file and test if all these work as expected. We're going to reload our file into the REPL so that hook SQL is updated with knowing that the SQL file is updated. And you can test this out by checking your IntelliSense and typing in get. You should now have get contacts by ID as well as get contacts. And first, we'll test out get contacts. This will return an empty list because we need to actually create something. So now we're going to call insert contact, remembering to pass in the database configuration. And then the second argument is going to be the parameters that we want to send into Hug SQL. And by the way, we, we defined our insert earlier. It only takes in first name, last name, and email. And I'm going to be really creative and just put my name in there. And this is going to be a fake email, just in case you were wondering. So we can now test this out. And what we, what we get back is going to be the returning ID. Because if you remember, I added the returning ID. This is kind of a feature of Postgres. So if you're connected to a MySQL database, you might not have this specific syntax. But those are the weird differences between databases. But now that we inserted something, we can test out get contacts and this should give us a list with stuff inside of it. And it does. Although it's a little cut off here, so inside of our output we need to scroll down to see the full list here. Likewise, we can also test out get contact by ID. And you guessed it, the second parameter is going to be an ID and we'll just pass in one. And when you evaluate it, we'll get the same thing because there's only one thing inside. It would be good to note here that everything comes back as a list, but 
We'll also want to check updates. And update needs an ID, so we'll pass in ID of one. I'll just change my name to updated, so we can do that. This returns a number of how many have been updated, so it'll be either zero or one. But we can now evaluate the select everything, and this comes back with the first name of updated, so that's correct. And then finally, we'll just delete, and one comes back, and now there's nothing inside the database. Now before we get into the API handlers, uh, just to have something in the database, I'm just going to rerun insert. So when we get to testing out our API, we'll already have some stuff inside of it. All right, speaking of which, let's go back into core, and we're going to import the DB file. And inside of API, let's create some routes. I still want this handler as a sort of ping, so we could do a health check. And instead of hello world, we can just change this to ping and respond with pong. But we want to nest inside of API a contacts routes. And right now, I'm just going to add a get handler where we'll respond with status of 200 and the result of db slash get contacts. And remember, we have to pass in the config, which also comes from the db file. Let's load the file into the REPL so that we know that we haven't made any mistakes. And in our comment block, I'm going to start the server, check our ping, which should give us a 200 response. And contacts should also give us a 200 response. We're going to want to see the actual contents of body. So we'll open up an HTTP client and send a request to contacts or slash API slash contacts. And everything inside of our database is returned as JSON. And since this is the select all route, it would make more sense if there's more than one item inside. So I'm just going to load up the DB file and insert another contact. This one's just going to be Mary Sue. And she will get an ID of three, which is fine. But now the root contacts route should contain more than one. And it does. Now I'm going to end the video here, so we'll handle all the routes in the next video, but I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about Hug SQL and how it interacts with Clojure as well as SQL, and I'll see you all next time.